Hi there, I'm Vincent Boss and I provide dating and self-improvement advice. And in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing Don't do this during no contact. I provide audio coaching for breakup recovery, trying to get an ex back, attracting someone new and life coaching. Visit www.dateme.tips for more details. Please check your spam and junk folders if you are expecting an email from me. So now let's get back into today's podcast. And today we are discussing, don't do this during no contact. So if you have been dumped and want to try to get your ex back, you are likely implementing the no contact rule. And it can be a very challenging time. In today's podcast, I'll be telling you three things you need to stop doing during no contact to give yourself an easier time. So let's get straight into this. And point number one is counting the days. So the first thing I'm going to suggest that you don't do during the no contact period is counting the days. And it's much easier for me to say than it is for you to actually listen and take note of because it's very natural to want to count the days. It's very natural to say, hey, you know, I'm 10 days no contact. I'm 10 weeks no contact. I'm 10 months no contact. However long it has been since you decided to stop reaching out to your ex for unnecessary reasons, it is very natural to count the days as not only a way to pat yourself on the back and say, hey, look how well I'm doing. I never thought I could stop contacting my ex. And look how I've achieved this by how many days I haven't actually reached out to them. Not only that, but you might feel to yourself this could be a sign of how much closer you are to hopefully hearing from your ex. I've said in many other podcasts, but from my own research, the average amount of time that dumpers reach out to a dumpy is roughly around six months. And therefore, I completely understand why some dumpies might be thinking, right, how close am I to that six-month mark? How close am I to that point when my expert dumper might reach out to me. But it is not helpful to count the days. Even if you feel that it's to pat yourself on the back and say, well done, look how well I'm doing, that isn't going to help you, but it's just going to remind yourself of your ex day in, day out. Every time you work it out in your mind how long it's been, every time you write in your diary, every time you tell someone how long it has been since you last deliberately reached out to your ex for an unnecessary reason, That is just making you think of your ex. It's just making you think of your dumper. And not only that, if you're trying to connect it to the average amount of time before your expert dumper might reach out to you, well, unfortunately, this might be setting yourself up for a fall. Because as I said a little earlier, my research suggests this is the average amount of time. It doesn't mean that bang on six months, your expert dumper is going to reach out to you. It might be sooner than that. It might be a lot longer than that. And sadly, for some dumpies, it will never happen because there is no 100% guaranteed way to get an ex back. Nothing works 100% of the time and nothing fails 100% of the time. So for some of you listening, sadly, your ex for dumper will never reach out to you. Most of you, if you follow the hints, tips and advice that I give and suggest, you will increase your chance of one day hearing from your ex. But even if you do, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be in that six month realm. You could be lucky, you could be someone who hears from your ex much sooner, or you could be someone who doesn't hear from their ex until two years later. I can't predict exactly when that will be, and neither can you, and nobody else can as well. Nobody can predict this. So therefore, it's not helpful for you to be counting the days as a way to try and say, right, I'm so close to the point where my ex will reach out to me, because it might not happen. And then you are going to feel very, very insecure. You're going to feel negative. Your self-esteem is going to drop and your anxiety is going to raise. That's not what we want. We don't want you feeling anxious and upset. We want you living your life to the full and passively, maybe every now and again, just noticing how long it has been roughly. Of course, that's going to be natural. Of course, you're going to know somewhat when you last reached out to your ex, but not bang on the day, not crossing off the days in your diary, not writing it down, not making a note, not speaking about it to your friends and family in a way where you're trying to head towards a goal. This isn't like where you might be saying, hey, 
in a hundred days time, I'm going on vacation. In a hundred days time, I'm going on that great holiday I wanted. And therefore you're crossing off the days. It's not like that because there is no guaranteed outcome at the end of it. So please don't cross off the days. Don't count the days. Don't understand exactly how long it has been since you last reached out to your ex. The sooner you can actually forget when you last did it, the better. And you might not be able to do that, but you can certainly stop counting the days as a way to try and either celebrate your own success, because sadly, it's not going to help you. Celebrating your success is great, but when you're thinking about your ex as part of that celebration, it's just going to keep dragging you down. So yes, you might think, well, I've done so well, I never thought I'd ever stop chasing them, and I have. Well done to me. Yes, that's great. That's wonderful. But unfortunately, celebrating this type of success is going to always be connected to you thinking of your ex dumper. That isn't going to help. So please don't count the days. So now let's get into point number two and the second point of today's podcast. Please like this video if you're watching on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. And point number two is reading old texts. So today we're speaking about don't do this during no contact. And point number two is so important. Don't read old texts. Now this is something that lots of dumpies will do as a way to try and make sense of the situation or maybe as a way of them thinking that this could actually soothe their mindset. Now sadly, this isn't going to help you. Now let's look at the second suggestion first when I said it might soothe your mindset. Now although you might take some level of comfort that you could read old texts and maybe feel the love that you and your ex had once for one another in an equal way, that might give you some level of comfort initially and it is good to recognise and realise that the love you had between you was real because in most instances it was. However, if you're doing this for that reason, it's then going to leave that gaping hole in your mindset of when you're thinking, well, where is that love now? I can clearly feel that they used to love me, but where is that love now? That is going to make you feel sad, upset, anxious. Again, we're trying to remove that anxiety and feeling anxious is not going to help you. It's not going to make you feel better. So reading old texts, recognising about how much love you have between you, yes, the principle might be good, but it's going to leave you in a sad, upset state. We don't want you feeling sad, especially when most people read through old texts just before they go to bed. Don't ask me why that seems to be. Maybe it's because that is when someone is likely to have some free time just before they go to sleep, and they might read back through their old texts. That's not going to help you get a good night's sleep. That is going to really destroy your mindset just before you need that precious sleep. So please, don't read the texts for that particular reason, but don't read it for any reason either. And the other reason I suggested was when people are trying to make sense of things. You're a dumpy, you were blindsided by the breakup, you don't understand why you were dumped, so you read through the texts every single day. Everything that your ex sent you over the last 9-12 months you're reading through with a fine tooth comb, trying to be a detective, trying to be the next Sherlock Holmes. Well, the truth is, you're probably not going to find the answer you crave. And even if you do find what you believe to be the answer, what difference does it make? What difference does it make if you put the pieces of a puzzle together and figure out why you believe they dumped you? Which, incidentally, is probably not going to be fully accurate anyway, but let's just say you somehow do come to the correct conclusion. What does that do? Now, yes, you might think to yourself, well, it prevents me from making such mistakes again. Okay, that's fair enough. That is a positive you can take from this negative. But by and large, what you are doing once more is flooding your mind with thoughts of your ex dumper, flooding your mind of why you and them broke up, flooding your mind why you might feel you aren't good enough. And that isn't the case. You being dumped doesn't mean you're not a good person. You being dumped does not mean you're not someone who can get their ex back. You can get your ex back in a lot of instances. Even if you don't, you can find someone even better. This isn't about you being someone who is going to be alone forevermore. You won't be. If you move forward in a positive way, if you don't get them back, you can find someone even better. So don't read old texts, try to figure out why you were dumped and come to the conclusion that you're a quote-unquote loser. 
because whatever you read isn't necessarily going to be the complete picture and it's not helpful to you. It's not helpful for you to feel bad or sad or upset or low value. We need to raise your self-esteem. We need to raise your confidence. And although it's good to take accountability, it's good to acknowledge that none of us are perfect. We're all human beings, me included. Yes, it's great to take accountability, but it's not good to constantly beat yourself up day in, day out by reading old texts and coming to some type of decision about what type of person your ex is, what type of person you are, what went wrong, and why they did what they did. This is the present day. The past is the past. We don't have a time machine. We can't go back. Yes, take accountability, but don't wallow and drown in the sadness and the upset that is brought on by reading through these old texts. Like I said, it doesn't really matter the reason that you decide to read through them. It's not going to help you. Now, if you would like advice and support about how to try and increase the chance of one day getting your ex back, then you may want to consider my audio coaching service where me and you can speak one-on-one about your unique specific situation. Go to my website www.dateme.tips for more information about how I can become your coach and your teammate via my audio coaching service. So now let's get into point number three and the final point of today's podcast about don't do this during no contact. And point number three is deliberately trying to bump into your ex. Now, something that a lot of dumpies try to do during the no contact process is accidentally on purpose bump into their ex. Now, the concept somewhat makes sense. A dumpy might be thinking, well, I've made a lot of progress in my life and I want my expert dumper to see it. And therefore, I want to accidentally on purpose bump into them because how on earth could they find out about my progress in another way? Now, although that might make sense to you as a dumpy, it's not likely to be helpful. Firstly, there are many ways your expert dumper could find out about your progress. You may have friends of friends. You may have people who connect between you. They could pass this information on. I'm not telling you to ask the person to pass it on, but just trust the process that they likely will. Additionally, social media can also be helpful. Even if you don't follow one another, even if you're not friends with one another, if you put positive things out into the world, it is often likely to be something that your ex sees or reads. So they are two examples of how your expert dumper can understand and learn about your progress without you actually bumping into them. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, I don't have social media. We have no friends in common. This isn't going to be something which could help me. Well, even if you don't have those elements at play, just implementing my version of a no contact rule has been proven to be enough in the long term to one day get some dumpers to reach out to their dumpies. It could be a long time. It might be beyond that average of six months, but I've seen many instances where the only thing pulling a dumper to reach out to their dumpee is my version of a no contact rule. And if you want to understand more about my version and why it differs to some of the other versions you can find online, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my playlist entitled the no contact rule so you can fully immerse yourself in my variety of rule and understand why I believe it will give you that best possible chance of success. I don't believe that deliberately trying to bump into your ex is going to help you because firstly, it's very hard to actually make such a plan look natural and make sure that your expert dumper doesn't see straight through it. If they believe that you have deliberately bumped into them, that already destroys the work you've done during no contact. If your expert dumper believes that you've accidentally on purpose and they know it was really on purpose, bumped into them, then what does this mean? It means you've broken no contact. It means you have lived your life in a way where you are still chasing your ex. Maybe you haven't reached out to your ex in four or five months and now all of a sudden you deliberately wait outside where they work. Maybe you're walking by at exactly the same time you know they're going to come out. And what happens there? Your expert dumper walks out of work, they see you, and they know that you know that's when they leave work. They know that you know this. They know that this is deliberate, and therefore you broke no contact. You might not have sent them a text, but it's the same principle. You've broken no contact. So what does this mean? Well, it means that your expert dumper knows that you're still interested, you're still chasing them, you still want to push them on a pedestal, you still need them. Your expert dumper will know 
this is deliberate. It's still you breaking no contact. Now, what if you manage to create an elaborate plan where there's no way that your expert dumper could actually realize and understand, but it was accidentally on purpose? What then? Well, what I would suggest to you is that you're not likely to be able to keep things together in the way that you might be able to do in an authentic accidental meetup. Let me explain why. If you accidentally, genuinely accidentally bump into your ex, you're going to be so surprised that you are likely to be able to continue living your life in the way that you were going to. I suggest if you bump into your ex, unless they try and stop you, you smile, you say hi, and you keep going where you're going. That is likely what you would do in a genuine accidental situation because you'd be shocked. You didn't see it coming. You're not sure what to do. And if you listen to my advice, you would do as I've just suggested. But if you deliberately want to bump into them, of course, you're not going to be doing that. Of course, what's actually going to happen is you are going to want to have a conversation. So what happens if you bump into your ex, you've created this plan, they don't realize that it was deliberate, but here you both are next to each other. Does that mean your expert dumper actually wants to speak with you? Well, I would say there's a good chance that they don't, but you do because you've set up this plan. So what do we see here? An awkward interaction, which can seem very weird to anybody who is involved in it and unfortunately can turn quite negative. You want to force the issue of a conversation. They probably don't want the conversation and everything might spiral out of control. And this is why I don't suggest that you deliberately try bumping into your ex because it's not going to work in the way that you want. My idea, if you bump into them accidentally, is smile, say hi, keep going where you're going unless they stop you. And that's the point. If you deliberately do this, you're not going to want to do that. You're going to want to speak. You're going to force the issue. And unfortunately, I don't think that's going to put you in the best light in your expert dumper's mind. If you believe that this podcast has helped you, then please consider buying me a coffee. The link to do so is in the description.